I witnessed it firsthand, Ian, and um, just the, how everyone wants it. Sorry, that's. Can you fix that? If there's an echo there. Is just... Hang on. The voice is rebounding. Yeah. Yeah, that's better there. Sorry, and yeah. So, um, yeah, it was. Uh, no, it's an incredible moment in the history. You know, having felt it when I was there, the. The, the the dream of, of of winning the Premier League, you know, for for a club of you know such an iconic status around the world, and um, we obviously uh, went for very close in my time there, even though the club was in a in a different moment. But uh, now, just delighted for for Jurgen. He's done it. He's done a brilliant job, uh, and in particular these last couple of years where they've gone so close. Um, so happy for Jordan Henderson. You know, Jordan was absolutely amazing for me and my time there to so to see him have the success that he's had over the last couple of years and now to to, to lift the Premier League title and I'm obviously very pleased and for the supporters like you say it's um, it's a huge club wherever you travel in the world as Liverpool manager um, they, they're there and there's thousands and, uh, and like I say there's, there's there'll be a great celebration now for, for a number of days I'm sure and uh, and hopefully, when the time is right, the, the the players will be able to to celebrate with the uh, with the supporters and and, and Jurgen. So, uh, so yeah, and also pleased for for the ownership, and um, because uh, FSG, you know, came into football new, and and I was a part of the process there, and 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 each year they've developed and learned everything about the the game over here and uh, uh, in England, and and like I say, they they're, they're fantastic owners and. And deserve that success as well. So, uh, so yeah, very fit and been the the most consistent, brilliant team this season, and uh, and happy for it. You mentioned a few of the players. Um, one in particular, you must be pleased for. Am I right in saying you gave young Trent Alexander Arnold his first outing away at Swindon in a pre-season? Was it not as a, a young teenage boy? Is that right? Yeah. Well, to be fair, he's he's developed so much in in the last number of years. But yeah, he was a talented player in the academy at the time, and um. So yeah, we, we when we played the uh, game away at Swindon, we took him along, and he he played a, a good part in that game for us at, at right back. So um, now he, he's developed into one of the world's best full backs. And uh, but you look through the team, the, the team of so much quality, um, professionalism, you know, players at the the very highest level. And of course, when when they saw Philippe a few years ago. Uh, the money that they, they gained from that has allowed them to buy Van Dijk and and Fabinho and and Allison and three players that have just absolutely transformed the the team. So um, so yeah, um, an amazing moment for them. And um, and like I say, they've they've had a couple of years in particular where they, they, they they've looked like a machine and and been super. Last one on Liverpool from me, if you wouldn't mind. Um, have you called or texted Jurgen? Yes, yeah, yeah. I uh, texted him last night, and uh, and the owners, and obviously Jordan, who I I know very well, and uh, I'm just just absolutely delighted for them all. Um, moving on to your game on Sunday, what injury problems do you have, Brendan? If indeed you have any right now ahead of the game against Chelsea, nothing at the moment. Ian, we're just uh, sort of ticking along and and, and really looking forward to it. So. Uh, so yeah, nothing, nothing as of note, and hopefully we can stay that way over the next uh, day or so. Um, I know that the boot has often been on the other foot with short turnarounds and things, but do you have any sympathy with Frank Lampard? Of course, his players played last night, and you've got an extra couple of days on them. I know it's a brutal industry, and you've, you know, that gives you a bit of an advantage. But um, they they played pretty hard last night, so you've got a couple of days jump on them. It seems. Yeah, I think we had it the reverse the other way. You know, when we played on the on on the Saturday, and then. Had to play on the Tuesday again. So, um, but now but both squads, Frank. You know, if you look at the players that weren't starting, he's, he's got a really strong squad there. So I'm sure he'll look to to delve into that that quality and uh, and, and look for them to to, to start the game. So um, we're just looking forward to it. It's, it's a great occasion uh, to to be playing in the quarter final. Okay, we get no supporters there, which is disappointing. But you know, the the, the possibility to get to a sem, semi final is really God's excited and uh, we want to give it everything to get there. And it's been 38 years, Brendan, 81-82, the last time Leicester City got to the semi-final of an FA Cup. You, you, you fancy it this weekend to break that history? 
Well, that that's what we we aim to do. We in our time together, we we wanted to create the uh, the history of our own. And throughout this season, we've we've broken records and 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 had performances that have enabled us to do that. So, so that's our aim to to get to the semi final. We know it'll be a, a very tough game against a very talented squad, but but two games against Chelsea uh, uh, this season where you know what we could have won both games. So. Um, so yeah, we we hopefully can take the next step now on the weekend. Does it still feel like the FA Cup in the current circumstances with this competition, Brendan? Yeah, I think there's a lot of the preparation, and it's very much the same as if you're preparing normally. It's it's more just when you when you get to the stadium, it's when it sort of hits you that, that you know the the buzz and excitement of the crowd and the people, especially at a club like Leicester City, where that that connection between players and um, and supporters is, is so strong. Uh, we clearly, clearly miss them when they're not there. Uh, but that's all the preparation up until that point and focus and work that goes in is very much the same. It's just obviously when you get to the game day, uh, you don't quite have the, uh, the that support behind you. So, so we'll always miss that. But we have to uh, we have to focus on performing well and uh, and hopefully getting the result. I wonder how you feel about long-standing historic uh, victories or defeats or bogey teams or anything like that. Leicester City have played out Chelsea eight times in the FA Cup and they've never beaten them. Are you the sort of manager that looks at that and, and worries about that as a hoodoo or do you look at it and think it's got to be broken at some stage? Yeah, no, exactly that. I always think that. Um, even myself as a manager, I've, I've not beaten Chelsea and, and all the teams I've, I've been involved with from from... Watford and Swansea, so you, you just sometimes get that uh, get that record, even though it looked like close. And you know, we're one 0 up against Swansea, and I think we can see that an equaliser in about the seventh minute of injury time or something. So, uh, but no, I, I'm I'm the eternal optimist in, in, in everything that I do. So uh, I'll always believe that uh, you, uh, you you will get the opportunity and it'll come at some point. So, uh, but you always have to push for it every single time you play, and that's what we're aim to do. Lots of talk on our airwaves, Brendan, about creating opportunities as, as an attacking threat. You mentioned being an attacking threat following the draw against Brighton and, and how you generate more attacking threats positionally or, or personnel. What have your thoughts been since that draw about Brighton as to how you get Jamie Vardy a bit more action in the game? Yeah, it's not just Jamie. It's 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 the responsibility of the team, you know, and obviously, of course, the guys at the top end of the, the field. Um, I think there's a multiple number of reasons. Of course, the the, the, from having the break, it's um, you know over the end the three months when we got the players back, they they were at a good level of fitness. But of course, we play at a really intense level, and um, so so that's something that we missed. And obviously, of course, on the uh, on the training field. But I think it's just getting back to what we've done. You know, what we showed the players this morning. You know, just reaffirming our our, our method and our game model and how we work. You know, we're, we're a team that very much likes to stretch teams, uh, likes to run in behind. So the movement of the players to stretch the game is so, so important for us. And I thought in the first half against Brighton, but we didn't have anywhere near enough of that. You know, we have certain triggers in the game where uh, where the players can must run in behind, you know, either to get the ball or to create space for others. So, uh, and we didn't have that in the first half. So, um, so yes, we need to uh, do much more of that you know that running off the ball, which is it's the hard work. That's the hard graft because sometimes you're you're self-sacrificing to not get it, but the team will will benefit, uh, and that's something that uh, we've been talking about and working on uh, over these last few days since since Brighton. So um, so yeah, but but listen, we're a team that apart from what Liverpool, we get the the best defensive record in the league, and uh, and they tell me apart from Liverpool and Man City, we've scored. The most goals, so uh, so we're clearly a team that is is has done something right, and I think that getting that rhythm back again, getting that intensity back into a game uh, as quick as we possibly can. Final one from me, Brendan. If you... Ooh, we're getting some feedback your end, I think. Hey, that's better. Final one from me. Um, I recall a few of the players. This is a first season, full season uh, since the club, of course, lost um, Convishai last season, and there was a bit of talk, kind of pre-season about. 
the, the cup competitions maybe carrying it a little more significance this season, Brendan, as a, as a motivating factor. I know that then puts pressure on and, and there's almost a over over desire. But is is winning a trophy for, for the late great Convishai and, and his son Kuntop still a motivating factor as you approach the FA Cup this weekend? Yeah, and for for obviously the ownership, absolutely, and but for everyone, you know, the, the club, like you say, has not won the competition. So, uh, so there's a real motivating factor there for uh, for us to do it for for ownership, for the players themselves, and obviously ultimately the supporters. So, uh, so yeah, we, we've we've hopefully showed our intent in all the cup competitions, getting to the semi final of the of the league cup, uh, and now getting to the quarter final of the of the FA Cup, of course, we uh, we want to get to the final. It's, it's been the aim right from the the very uh, offset of the season. So, um, so yeah, there's a there's a big motivation for for multiple reasons to uh, to to go ahead and, and win it. But it's a bit tough game for us, and we've got to just get focused on that. Thank you, Brendan. Good luck Sunday. Thanks, Ian. Thank you, uh, Jason Bourne. Talk sport, please. Uh, many thanks. Uh, afternoon, Brendan. Good to see you. Um, just a word on Chelsea. Of course, they beat Manchester City. Manchester United also doing well in the Premier League since returning. Uh, both in decent form. Are you concerned by by the chasing pack at all when it comes to those Champions League places? No, no. I, I think it's one. Of course, the the teams that you said they've they, they've picked up uh, the results since they've come back. Um, we, we've obviously had two draws, so so not ideal. But but listen, whatever way you want to spin it, either positive or negative, we, we've we're we're in the position through ourselves, and we're, we're third in the league, uh, in a great position, and uh, and it's something that with seven games to go, we aim to give absolutely everything to uh, to finish where we would want to finish. So uh, and if that doesn't happen this year, we know at least as long as we've given it everything. But our focus is to, you know, what we've shown right up until 31 games that uh, we're worthy of being where we are. So all the teams that uh, we have yet to play, we have, uh, in, in the league, we, uh, we have beaten. And uh, apart from Manchester United, uh, where we went close to Old Trafford. So uh, so we'll go into these games and, and, and look to get back to performing well. I think that's the key for us, you know, getting back to our, our level of performance. Uh, getting that intent in our game, the intensity back to it. But I'm also recognising it's been such a big season for for a lot of our players and a lot of our players are young players. So we've had uh, probably over this last period that little bit of inconsistency that you get with 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 young players as one of the youngest squads in the in the league. So uh, so I understand that, but of course it doesn't stop us pushing to. Uh, and to to finish as high as we can, and we can only worry about ourselves. But like you say, those teams there uh, obviously are expected to to finish above us and be above us. Uh, but currently, we are where we are on merit, and we'll we'll look to to hopefully finish the job off. You played Chelsea a couple of times this season, right at the start. It seems such a long time ago now, um, mm. and also back in February at the King Power Stadium as well. Um, obviously, Frank Lampard just getting his feet under the table for that first few weeks of the season. But in those two games, what did you learn about facing Chelsea? The top class team. I think everyone forgets that they were in the top four last year and they won the Europa League. And uh, I think the only player they've lost from that would have been Eden Hazard, who, of course, is a is a world class player. Um, but uh, but they're a fantastic team, and like any. Top team, they play with a good tempo. They get players that are that are winners and players that are highly motivated. You know, Chelsea's a club with that uh, winner mentality, and uh, that's something that's very apparent when you when you work at those those clubs. So the players are there to win, perform. I think Frank's done fantastic in his uh, in his first season there. You know, he's, he's blooded the young players, given them an opportunity, and and he will have learned lessons himself from the, the European games and. And where they've needed to improve, and you've seen that already with the, the players that they've already looked at bringing in. So they're they're looking to the challenge for the for the league. So, uh, but yeah, I, I, there's no surprises, just other than that uh, that they're a top class team that, uh, that played very well. Yeah, do you, do you only see them getting stronger now? I mean, you mentioned the, the players that they brought in already. You'd imagine they're still one or two at least to bring in. Do you see them still getting stronger still? 
Yeah, I think that obviously with the season of not being able to bring in anyone, uh, and obviously, you know, Chelsea's measure is up there with the, the very best in European football. So they'll obviously have felt that they've needed to reinforce the squad and, and now they can do that. And they've been able to do that virtually, you know, from uh, you know from January onwards. So, um, so yeah, so so they'll definitely be a team that uh, you know, these next few years will be looking to challenge. And, and now they're a very talented squad. I know Ian mentioned a few moments ago with the with the chairman, of course. Now amongst the fans, uh, there's real hunger uh, amongst them to win the FA Cup, finally win that competition. It's something that's eluded the club during its history. I'm sure you know that it's never been achieved here. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I've been very aware of that over the last season or so here. So, uh, yeah, and this neat season I am here, we'll, we'll give everything and we'll give it the respect to, to try and, and do that. Of course, there's, there's great opponents in front of us and, and if we get through that, you know, you've still got another couple of games. But we'll, we'll give everything we possibly can to, uh, to, to look to achieve it and uh, that will always be uh, a very important competition for us in my time here. Thank you, Randy. Good luck. Yes, thank you. Um, okay, Gary Cottrell, Sky Sports, please. Just a mute, Riley. Go. I'm, I'm muted, Brendan. Just a couple, really. Um, I think I get the sense that you and, and the players saw the um, being knocked out by Villa in the in the League Cup as a as a real opportunity missed. Is that in itself also an inspiration ahead of the you know the, the FA Cup games? Yeah, absolutely, Gary. There's, there's no doubt about that. I'd, I'd mentioned after that because we, we'd showed in the league games the level that we would play at, but but cups are different. You know, you some of them like the one-off games, and and you you have to have that something extra, that little extra bit of desire, that little bit of extra motivation to to go on and and, and challenge to win them. So um, so yeah, we, we were really disappointed with the with the Aston Villa semi-final even though we played reasonably well in both and created enough chances, we ultimately didn't get through. And uh, so that's something that we'll, we'll use as a, as a positive going forward. And it's something that I mentioned at the time. About, you know, you've, in order to succeed, you need to feel that. You know, you're never always going to have it on your own way. You're going to lose games like that, semi-finals and whatnot. So, uh, but there's a, there, there's a great motivation there uh, not to have that feeling again. And that's what, that's what drives you on. The final one on uh, Jürgen, you know him well, uh, he's on social media throwing a few shapes at celebrations Is last he? night, did you know he had that in him? Well I haven't, uh, I haven't seen anything but to be fair he, he's, he looks very, uh, yeah he looks very good at partying to be fair, <laughs> he's, he's had a few <laughs> I've seen since, uh, since he's been here but no it's just you know an absolutely brilliant achievement by himself and, and the players and you know, they've, in particular, as I say, Gary, these last couple of years, the, the, the mentality in the team to, to win has, and has progressed. And, and like you say, they, they, they've been consistently the, the best team uh, by, by quite a way this year. So, uh, so now they deserve the chance to be able to do that. It's been absolutely a brilliant season for them and to get the, the title after such a long wait. Delighted for all the supporters and, uh, and I'm sure they'll all celebrate accordingly. Are you pleased that the party didn't take place at your house? Sorry? Are you pleased the party didn't take place at your house? How do you mean? <laughs> well, is he still renting from you? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Okay, folks, we're going to break off for daily shortly, but is there any, if, if any other broadcasters have got anything they urgently need, if they just raise a hand, then we'll deal with it now. Okay, great. In which case, um, thank you to our broadcast colleagues and if the dailies want to hang on um, and we'll, we'll do a, a few minutes for them afterwards.